Cool. So welcome to this short five minute video explaining the Agile retrospective template with Google Slides. The purpose of this is to give a retrospective template and to demonstrate again how to use, uh, how you can use Google Slides for that. You can name your retro, you can put a date. I like to put dates uh, on, the, on the retro as the first kind of like welcoming the slide. You should be, um, you will need a Google account to edit this. And you'll see this file in your recently opened files in Google Drive. Uh, this is very important. You won't be able to just edit the, the link that we give you. Uh, you'll see it in your recently opened files and you'll be able to create a copy from that that you can customize and do whatever you want with it. Uh, the second one that I have is uh, a objective roles and rules and agendas that is from David Sibet's um, book. This is a sketch I made. And the purpose is to just clearly show the agenda of the activities that we're gonna go through, how long they is gonna take. And uh, of course, it's a, it's a plan that might not survive contact with your group, but it's good to have it out there to know what time is gonna end. Uh, in the rules, I have Kurt's Prime Directive, which I think is important, but you can of course edit everything with um, team norms that you have. And then in the outcomes, I like to call out if there is a theme about this retrospective. And I put in a few questions that might be um, in generating interesting reflections. Now, uh, when you facilitate this, you will share the link. You will allow any people with the link to edit this. That's how you're going to allow them to interact with this slide and to uh, make it an interactive activity. And so the, each slide follows, um, this template follows the five steps and each slide has uh, a little green area at the top explaining. And this is a, a citation from the Agile Retrospective book and it explains what that step um, is about. I won't get into the details of that in this five minutes. Uh, this five minutes are just to clarify a few gotchas that might be frustrating um, to find out about the technicalities of using Google Slides. So the first one, when you set the stage, I have this, and I picked activities for these five steps. And um, vanilla activities that might uh, work for you, there is a similar template in Miro that you'll find in a separate link. You can swap, and I suggest you to swap activities in and out based on your context and your group. But this one that I picked for set the stage is the ESVP to check the team temperature. And in Google Slide, you don't have any uh, voting tools. So the approach here is to have little tokens. And once you prompt the group with this uh, activity, you have them move those tokens one per person on the role that represents how they feel. So again, this is a way to mimic a voting system in Google Slide. The second um, step here is to gather data. And in this step, um, you'll find this frim activity from Diana. And in this, um, in this slide, this is a table that I um, basically put as the background of this slide so that people don't accidentally move around lines and get into a confusing state. So if you try and edit this, you won't be able to, but it's as simple as inserting a table and then taking a screenshot of this thing. Uh, and uh, so I took the screenshot of it and I made it a, a background. So you need to rep if you need to replicate it, uh, you shouldn't have any problem. You won't be able to edit this uh, as it is. And then the next one is for generating insights. Again, a brief explanation. And then we go on to deciding what to do, where um, I want to highlight how much the space for, for the soup is outside the white uh, slide. So the, the actual slide, so if you fit, you'll see the actual slide that is meant to be presented in uh, usual context for Google Slides. Uh, but uh, we can play with this and kind of use it as an infinite canvas. So if you look uh, and, and you, you're in this space, so we can zoom in to, the, to this leftmost corner, right? And you can start, if you clone some of those uh, post-its, right? Uh, this bottom slide bar will give you more space. So technically, 
you have an infinite canvas. It's not like as uh, nifty as uh, Miro or Mural, but keep it in mind as an uh, as a possibility that Google Slides give you gives you. Um, voting a uh, similar scenario as before. Uh, I have tokens, so you move the tokens over to the uh, actions that you want to focus on. The other way to make it a non-leading voting, meaning that if you have like five people voting and two already voted here, one here, the remaining two kind of like already know where to kind of like put their vote to make it matter. What I suggest you to do is to have a voting system in parallel and have people send you private message in Slack or in your video chatting tool and put a number. So number one is this action, number two is this other action. Send me the number of the action or the two actions or the N actions that you want to vote on. This way um, you will uh, avoid this leading voting um, issue. Final slide is about the feedback. Um, similar thing, this is a background, this is a roti activity. Uh, this is a background, I just took uh, squares, put numbers, but uh, I took the background and made it a background image so that people won't uh, mess up the text or, uh, or find that um, annoying moving things when voting. Uh, this is really all I wanted to cover in this. Um, if you have any question, let us know in the, um, on the website, on Twitter, and thank you for watching.